Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, my name is James Porter. I'm the Associate Director of External Relations at the End Fund. Um, for those who may not know, the End Fund is a private philanthropic initiative, and our aim is to end the five most prevalent neglected tropical diseases uh, through private capital. So my colleague Yaine will be speaking on a panel a little bit later, so she'll go into a little bit more detail about the end fund. But since uh, time is short, um, I wanted to start with a quick video. It was about 40 seconds. I'd preloaded it on the computer if possible to kind of set the scene, this video. Ce n'est pas seulement les maladies à potentiel épidémique, telles que le choléra, telles que le paludisme, telles que les autres maladies qui tuent, mais ces maladies négligées aussi ont une grande, un grand impact sur la population du site qui vous. Je suis ministre provincial en charge de la santé dans la province du site qui vous. Je suis pédiatre de formation. J'ai déjà travaillé à peu près 7 ans comme pédiatre dans la province. En rapport avec les maladies tropicales négligées, c'est une question très importante. Aussi une question très importante, on ignore que dans notre province, il y a le problème de filariose, de la cécité, des trachomes. Et pourtant, les études faites démontrent clairement que ces cas existent. Thank you, that's good. So that video was from a project that we worked on in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The full trip was to go to a small island called Ijbi Island, which is between Rwanda and the DRC on Lake Kivu. And it's part of South Kivu, which is, this was the provincial minister of health from South Kivu. So before we went to Ijbi Island, we went and visited with this minister. And I'll get back to that in a second. But part of the success of the end fund has been our ability to storytell, whether that's through video, photos, uh, other digital media. And for us, storytelling is really important, especially through film. Not everybody can get to the field to see our work, potential donors, uh, future investors. And so this is just a small way to, to bring them there. But it also can act as a form of what I call soft advocacy, so a lot of people see advocacy uh, directly, maybe not exactly lobbying governments, but reaching out to governments. But this is a way to have soft advocacy with many of the ministries of health that we work with. So I'll be talking about uh, three countries. And the first country will be Burundi, and then I'll talk about Rwanda and DRC. The, the first slide is Burundi. So Burundi and Rwanda were both uh, foundational investments for the end fund. So with one of our founding investors, Legatum, they have been working uh, in Burundi from 2007 through 2012, and the end fund was born in 2012, and 5.5 million people received NTD treatment. So this was an important story for the end fund to tell. And so we went uh, with a film crew and a photographer a few years ago in Burundi to capture the success of the story there. And part of the story was schistosomiasis, went from 12% to 1.4%, hookworm from 13% down to 3%. And so it was really this private investment from Legatum. And while we were there, we were able to interview the Minister of Health at the time and she directly spoke to the importance of private investment. And she said, without private investment, the country of Burundi would not be able to be as successful in controlling these diseases as we have been. And this was not prompted from her. I mean, we were asking her questions, but we hadn't you know, beforehand told her, we want you to talk about this. So even the, the actual trip itself, the logistics of the trip were all helped planned by the Ministry of Health. They identified people to talk to. They identified communities to visit. And so for them, it really showed how committed we were, that we were coming with a crew and we wanted to show the success of the country, but through the lens of partnership between private investment and the Ministry of Health. So that was really important for them. 
And so this is uh, one of the people that the Ministry of Health identified. Uh, her name is Petroni, and she spoke to also the education that they have received from the Ministry of Health. And this video actually specifically in Burundi, one of our investors told us that we had been in conversations with them, but they watched this video and that was one of the ways that they decided that they were going to invest in the end fund was of course all the information we had provided, but they also watched this video and saw themselves as an investor being able to join someone like Legatum and, and also invest in the end fund so that they could make a difference like this. So the next country is a similar story to Burundi, was Rwanda, which is also another foundational investment for the end fund. And uh, Rwanda was on the same trip as DRC. We also took a film crew there. And before uh, the Legatum decided to invest, there was no uh, national NTD uh, treatment on a large scale anyway. And one of our colleagues, had written a blog about a school. This is the school, uh, the Rosero Primary School, where schistosomiasis in this school, which was right uh, near all the environmental conditions that would set up a high infection of schistosomiasis, it was at 69.5%. So that was in 2008. And so he came back and told us that now, in 2015 at that time, the prevalence of schistosomiasis was 0%. So we thought, wow, this is, we have to go, we, ha we have to film the school, interview the teacher. It wasn't on our original scope of work for the trip, but it was so important because it really showed, once again, private investment, working with the Ministry of Health. And then in this case in Rwanda, uh, now we actually grant directly to the Ministry of Health, and uh, there's four million children who are going to be treated um, just in this quarter, actually, and so it was another really good example of uh, some soft advocacy for the government. We wound up um, ha being able to interview somebody from the Ministry of Health, and she just re was so passionate about the power of private philanthropy, and again, how the Ministry of Health there would not have been able to be, have been as successful as they were in schools such as this without investment. So both Burundi and Rwanda really showed that private investment, working with governments, can really make a difference. And then the, the final um, country was the DRC, and this was the, the small island I was talking about earlier, Ijibi Island. So there's about 250,000 people that live on this small, neglected island, and a, an initial baseline mapping had been done and showed high prevalence of intestinal worms, lymphatic filariasis, and schistosomiasis, and there had never been treatment for these, these people who live there. So this was an interesting ability, uh, capability for the end fund to see a before and after story for NTDs because they had never received treatment, they have a high burden of disease, and we, were, we thought to ourselves, this is a great communications opportunity to show kind of a complete story. So we went um, with programs colleagues as well as uh, a film crew, and we didn't really know what to expect, but the people were so warm and so welcoming. Uh, we wound up creating actually a longer video out of this story. It's about eight minutes long because there was such a robust story about how the possibility that existed. So the, the name of the video is actually an island of possibilities because the possibility exists for the children to be dewormed, who had such a heavy burden of worms for people to no longer have to live with lymphatic filariasis. I interviewed several adults who walked for three hours just to get to the health clinic that we were at because they heard that we were coming and they wanted, they were told you have your ability to tell your story, the end fund is not going to be able to cure your, your elephantiasis. But people knew that, but came out anyway and wanted to tell their stories. And so this was really a, a great opportunity for the donor perspective to show a, an area that had never been treated, but what could be possible with just a little bit of investment. And so uh, we have, actually in the next few weeks, 
a, a partner of ours who's a photographer is going to be going back after one of the first rounds of treatment, and she's followed some of the children along the way and is going to be seeing what what it looks like now, talking to mothers, talking to school children, talking to the teachers, and really trying to get the sense of what life is like now that they've been dewormed. Have they seen a difference? Are children going back to school? Are they, are they able to learn better? So that, that's coming, but this was kind of the opportunity for the before. So all three of these examples overall, there's specific things on the advocacy side and also on the fundraising side, but on the advocacy side, we really want the ministries of health to also feel ownership over this. It's not just the end fund documenting what's, what's going on. So we involve the ministries of health from the very beginning. They help us plan the trips. We give the footage over to the ministry of health because we want it to be useful for them as well. So they can use the raw footage. They can, if they want, they can use the full videos. We send the videos to them before we publish them on our website, make sure that it is in line with something that they would be proud of using and showing. Um, we've since been also to Ethiopia. We just produced some videos in Ethiopia um, that also highlighted the Ministry of Health. And so it was really important to make sure that the Ministry of Health really felt like they were involved in the process. And that's really important to us. And then on the investment side, um, we use these videos at events, as introductions. We have a series of, of dinners that we've been doing called Dining in the Dark, and uh, you get blindfolded, and then you, you wind up eating a little bit while you're blindfolded to connect to the blinding diseases that we work on, and we use some of the videos as introductions at those dinners. Another way that we use them, too, is for some of our investors as thank yous for staff engagement um, at the foundations or at the, at the at the corporate philanthropy where they work. So um, if they invest in any of these specific programs, we'll create a separate version that just simply has a thank you card at the end with thank you to whatever the organization is. And then some of the organizations have sent it around to their staff who maybe aren't as aware of the work that they're doing on NTDs. It's a large organization. They invest in a lot of different things. And so it's a way to show the staff uh, hey, this is something we're really proud of, and it keeps them engaged in some of the philanthropy that they may not be as as aware of. Um, we've also entered them into some media contests, contest, etc. But I think that being able to use videos not just for fundraising, because I think oftentimes people just see them as, well, we have to do these to show our work to get in money, which is important, but it's also important to show commitment to the governments that we're working with, and I think it's something we're gonna continue doing. Um, we're looking at other countries to visit this year. Definitely we'll be getting um, the ministries of health involved there to continue showing them that the end fund is committed to working with you, and this is also tools that you can use on your end as well. Thank you very much.